Brought to you from the Margaret Farrow Studio, this is Newsmakers. Hello and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm your host, Lisa Pugh. We are still more than six months out, but talk of November midterm elections is already heating up with eyes nationally on Wisconsin, including on our race for governor. Wisconsin's 46th governor, Democrat Tony Evers, is touting his record on fixing roads and increasing funding for education, while he faces criticism on the right on issues like public safety. Uh, so he is joining us today hey, to talk about up? why he's running and how he answers those critics. Welcome, Governor Evers. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So why are you running this time around? Well, it's, uh, first of all, we we have accomplished lots of things over the last three years, even in this difficult time when Republicans and Democrats don't agree on a lot. But, you know, whether it's fixing the roads or bringing broadband to over 300,000 households in the state of Wisconsin, lowering taxes, I think we have a good record. Obviously, there's lots of things to uh, figure out going forward. Uh, we didn't accomplish everything we wanted to. And so, yes, it's uh, some unfinished business, but uh, I think the people of Wisconsin really need to have a conversation about what we have accomplished and what, where we're going from here. So is that unfinished business the reason why you decided, I need another four years? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you did have a lot of campaign promises. Yeah. What kind of grade do you give yourself for these last four years? You're the education governor. What's that? Yeah, grade? I know. Everybody asks me that question, but you know, whether whether it is broadband or or other issues, uh, we have accomplished a lot. So I would say uh, a minus would be good because you know we you know you talk about school funding. I, I think uh, uh, you mentioned that and. Uh, we've got a ways to go there. We are at a historic level, but uh, the the way that money is funneled into um, a property tax relief instead of you know serving kids, that's an issue. We have to have a conversation about that. So a lot of things going forward that we want to accomplish. Do you think that it's reasonable to think that that particular issue uh, around school funding could get done in the next four years? There's no reason why I can't. We have a three we have a three point eight billion dollar surplus in the state. And uh, we've got a lot of catching up to do in a lot of areas. And I would say school funding is certainly one. You're going to see a lot of referenda going on uh, this, uh, this uh, April. Uh, and I'm sure we will next November. So that's the indication that uh, there's a lot of unmet needs. But I also, shared revenue for our municipalities is really, really critical to make sure that our municipalities have the resources they need to. So those are the two biggest areas of unfinished business. Would you say anything else on that list? Well, we've got, you know, we're just beginning our efforts around uh, uh, environmental issues and, you know, with uh, uh, a lot of environmental issues. And we have some goals around that to be carbon free by 2050. Uh, we've, got a lot of, we've got a lot of things to do yet, believe me. But that, that, those are just a few of them. So when you ran last time, first term as governor, w it, has that experience these last four years been what you expected, or what are some of the things about that that you weren't necessarily anticipating? Who could have anticipated a pandemic? Uh, there, there's, uh, there's no question that, you know, kind of sucked the air out of the room and uh, really put our our country and, and our world in a really complex, difficult place. And uh, so that, and I think our response to that was good. Obviously, the Supreme Court uh, made some decisions that I didn't think were par par uh, particularly helpful. But uh, at the end of the day, I w was just amazed at the resiliency of the people of Wisconsin during a pandemic is easily the the highlight of, uh, of my four years as governor. It's seeing it in businesses and individuals. Obviously, we lost 11,000 people that we, we, uh, we continue to mourn. But public health uh, at the local level and the state level did a great job. And so I feel the response was good, but uh, we, um, uh, we're still recovering and we'll continue to recover for some time. Anything about the day-to-day -day job about being governor that you didn't anticipate, but whether it's the budget process or working with the legislature? Well, I anticipated it was going to be tough working with the legislature. They made it clear right from the beginning, even before I became governor, where they had the lame duck session and uh, took some authority away from me and, and the attorney general. So th there's, there's nothing surprising. I, it, you know, 
The, the one thing, yes, we didn't agree on a lot, but I can t guarantee you I've signed more bills than I have vetoed. And, uh, and so people need to understand that there is, there is a push-pull all, all the time, the political end of things. But, you know, just uh, for example, just recently we passed a law that it seems small, but uh, had, you know, 100% you know, support from the legislature. It was allowing people that are in our armed, armed services that, re, that leave, leave those positions that are already trained as medics, that they, you don't have to go through this arduous uh, uh, certification licensing process, that that can be kind of uh, truncated a bit because they already have that experience and they already have that kind of type of training. That, those those things are really important. It, you know, kind of helps bolster our our um, our medical field and making sure we have lots of shortages there. But also honors people that are uh, coming out of uh, serving our country. Things like that happen every single day. To be honest with you, finding and, that bipartisan oh, of compromise. Course. Ab absolutely, mm -hmm. and and so it's easy to kind of focus on the you know, polarization. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. but it it is a thing, and I know people are sick of it, frankly, and that's why. You know, I continue to, I think there are some basics uh, here that our Wisconsin values and our kitchen table values, and it's around, around schools, it's around our, our roads, it is around our infrastructure, it is around health care. Some basic things that I think, for the most part, Democrats and Republicans get it. And, uh, and so I'll continue to focus on those things. Well, let's talk a little bit about those election issues yeah. that I'm sure you'll be talking more about sure. between now and November. Crime mm -hmm. is one of those issues. We know that people, Wisconsinites, are concerned about crime. Right. The Marquette Law School poll last fall said two-thirds of Wisconsinites think that crime is on the rise. Right. Uh, we're showing some data here from the Wisconsin Department of Justice comparing crime rates from 2019 and 2020. During that time frame, Wisconsin's violent crime rose by 8 percent nationally a record one-year increase in homicides. That was true in Milwaukee. Kenosha right. set a record 2021. Are you concerned about rising crime? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that is certainly n not just uns unfinished business. That is, that's a huge issue for the sta state and the country. And uh, I'll go back to something I said before. You know, uh, shared revenue is the States are the state's largest investment in the municipalities, and one of the largest investments for municipalities is uh, public safety. And we, you know, the previous administration, I don't want to talk a lot about that, but the fact of the matter is they actually cut shared revenue over their time in office, and, and public safety uh, expenditures went up 9%. So, it went, and then when I put together my two budgets, the Republicans refused to uh, have any increase for shared revenue. And that is, that is not where we need to be as a state. We need, we need to be helping out the, our municipalities. That's a, and some of that money obviously goes into whether you're going to be able to hire more police, more firefighters, more EMTs. And so there's a basic here that we have fallen down on significantly. That will continue to be a, a primar, uh, priority for me. But that said, we've been able to use federal money uh, through the American Rescue Plan Act to make some investments. We've put uh, money into uh, violence prevention. I, pr I provided $19 million uh, for every law enforcement agency in the state. They can use that money for hiring people, they training people. We've been a we put some significant uh, money into the Milwaukee County to make sure that they, they have this huge backlog of people that haven't been to trial during the p pandemic. And so it's a fairness thing. We, got, we have a huge backlog that really makes it you know, difficult. And frankly, as we've seen uh, with, uh, with the, the Waukesha um, situation where somebody didn't have the appropriate risk assessment and so got an extremely low bail and the results are, you know, hor horrific response. So we need, we need to make sure that we've cleared that backlog so that the system can work. Right now it's not working very well. So you're sharing what you say is your record on public safety. Yeah. Clearly the right mm -hmm. is, has been critical of you. Is, so is that, cr that criticism is unfair, you would say? Well, absolutely. I provided millions of dollars uh, using the ARPA money because the legislature has refused to increase shared revenue. The best situation is to have shared revenue being uh, increased. We can't, we can't just continue to starve our municipalities. How can they hire more people? How can they clear backlogs? How can they 
work on uh, really innovative things like violence prevention so programs. So you point the finger on public safety back at the Republican Party. Of course, you, you can't you can't de you can't deny the fact that you're you're starving uh, municipalities with six percent cut over you know, over uh, eight years and in, and and assuming that they're going to be able to keep keep running this shop the way they should. So yes, there the state absolutely has a role in making sure that uh, the municipalities have the resources they need. I provided $20 million, almost $20 million of ARPA funds to every law enforcement agency. They can use it whatever they want. They want to hire people, they want to train people, they want to uh, give bonuses to people. It doesn't make any difference to me. Those decisions are made locally all the time. They're not made at the state level. And so we'll continue to push that. My next budget, uh, you know. Expect more? Absol absolutely. Okay. Shared revenue is huge. You ask any mayor in the state. Okay. Uh, education also yeah. becoming, well, always was, mm -hmm. an election issue. You mentioned tomorrow's election day, April 5th in local communities, mm -hmm. lots of local referenda on the yeah. ballot. I think there's 81 communities determining whether or not they want to exceed those local uh, caps on revenue imposed by the state. Right. Speaker Voss, Assembly Speaker Voss, has said schools don't need more funding from the state. He responded to the state superintendent's comments back in September saying funding for K-12 education in Wisconsin is at historic levels. This year our schools received massive amount of one-time federal dollars. The Democrats singular focus to push more money into schools isn't a winning strategy for kids. We need to look at improving how they're being taught so kids aren't struggling with the basics, reading, writing, arithmetic. Throwing even more money at the problem will not fix it. Evaluating curriculum, academic testing, allowing parents to be part of the conversation are the real solutions. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, mm -hmm. does that mean that Wisconsin local taxpayers need to accept that local referenda as the way that they will continue to be funding their well, local schools? I sure trust our local school board members to make that decision rather than Robin Voss. Uh, we have local control in the state, and uh, I think we have a relatively good relationship, state and local. But at the end of the day, um, those decisions are going to be made by local school board members. And if 81 districts are saying we need more resources, and you, you even mentioned that, we, we provide a significant federal money, one-time money, for, for our school districts. And that, that if, if, there, if history is any guide here, uh, as the, the speaker said, we shouldn't, they, school districts are hearing him say that, hearing that we've got one-time money, knowing that that money's not going to be there, you know, uh, from his vantage point, not going to be there. I'd go to referendum too. Uh, it, it's, it's the wrong way to do it. You know, I've talked about the historic investment, and we have had historic investments, but as everybody knows in the school world, the money that, um, a lot of that money is for property tax relief, and, and because of uh, cost controls, uh, or revenue controls, s s school district can't use that money. It keeps property taxes down, which uh, is, you know, a goal in and of itself. I get that. But when we have school districts saying, the resources aren't there, and you know, I, and also take uh, some umbrage to the fact that you know he talks about the difficulties of of achievement. Of course, there are, and especially in air, you know, kids that uh, uh, that don't have the support they might need at home and elsewhere. I get that, but at the end of the day, uh, before I came into office, uh, we ranked 17th in the country. We now rank eighth in the country. Do we have do we have issues? Absolutely. Uh, but we, you know, I trust local school districts. I trust local school districts. I trust the parents in those local school districts to make those decisions, not Robin Voss. So when he says throwing even more money at the problem won't fix it, do you think that the state should be investing more money in schools with state tax dollars? And does that address these achievement concerns? Yeah, it, it would if we could do that. I mean, as I said, most of the money going to sc or a good share of the money that goes to school right now is all about keeping property taxes low. That sh that's a worthy goal. But at some point in time, schools need to be able to move ahead. You know, I'll use special ed funding as an example. Certainly, we're, we, we don't provide enough resources there. Mental health for kids, certainly we made some st strides, but not enough. So yes, um, I trust the local school districts, uh, boards, and, and teachers and parents to make those decisions. And if 81 school districts are saying we need to go to referendum, 
uh, because uh, we don't have the resources to do an adequate job. You've got to support that. Yeah, yeah. Robin Voss is not uh, not running the show in Toma or Oakfield or any other place that I've been. The school board is, with along with the parents and the teachers. Is the Republican legislature's position on public school funding starving public schools? No, I, I just I just don't think they listen uh, to you know the 81 school districts. Uh, obviously, have them if they're if they're. Uh, so if they're represented by Republicans in the legislature, they haven't made the case to those Republican legislature. I, I think Republicans value public education. I, I really do, but I, I just think uh, they need to balance, uh, to balance that to listen more to what the local school districts are saying. Do you think saying. we're at a tipping point with school funding in, this, in these next four years? I, yes, I, I do. I mean, we, we just can't continue to do... Uh, what happens to those, eight, say... Eight, 81 school districts uh, are, pass, are trying to pass referendum, and 70 do, and 11 don't. What happens in those 11 school districts? The state has an obligation to make sure that there's an equal opportunity across the state of Wisconsin. And if we're going to be relying on, eight, you know, we have 420-some school districts in the state, if 83, 81 are saying we don't have enough resources, that's a, and that's, that's a good hunk. You know, we do the math, I think that's about 20% of the school districts. There's also an education debate, as you know, mm. kind of bubbling up nationally and in Wisconsin about how much control parents should have over mm. what happens in the classroom, what's taught to their kids. The uh, February Marquette Law School poll asked that question, and it asked who should have the biggest role in determining public school curriculum. 35% of likely voters said parents, 33% said teachers, 13% said school boards, 9% said superintendents and principals, just 5% said state legislators should have a major role in curriculum. Do parents have enough say about what is being taught in the classroom to their kids? Yeah, and, the, and, the, and I would say that those figures are not only where it should be, I think it's kind of where, where it is now. I've always believed that parents are the first and best teachers of kids. And every place I've worked, uh, uh, parents are actively involved in curriculum uh, development and you know monetary issues also. And so I, I and I, I've worked directly for about 120 school board members in my life, and not once did I ever think any one of those people, any one of them, were making decisions that were not in the best interest of kids. And you know, if you, somebody said, "Here's a, that list of 120." I can maybe find five that I might know whether they're Democrats or Republicans. That just isn't an issue. And so local control is important. Having those school board members um, be active in the community and, and aware of what uh, people want. Having parents involved with curriculum, absolutely that's important and absolutely it's being done. So it's not that I'm, I'm suggesting that what that poll is wrong. I think it's reflective of reality. So is this issue of parental control in the classroom, is this like a red herring election I think talking so. point? I think so. I mean, there, there might be some place in the 420 school districts that some, some parents feel that they're not adequately listened to. But just from my experience, and it's pretty long in public schools, parents are, are involved directly. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's, not, you know, it's not just PTA, PTO, it's curriculum committees and so on. So I, I believe that, yes, they should be involved, and I think, yes, they are, and I think, yes, this is a bit of a red herring. You know, because it com comes out of the critical race theory and all that. Critical race theory isn't taught in our 420 school districts in the state. And so, yes, it's something that uh, Republicans think they can make some hay on, and frankly, I don't think it's going to work. So we're waiting once again for the state Supreme Court to rule on the redistricting maps. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Supreme Court sent your maps back, citing concerns about compliance with the Voting Rights Act. Do you, are you confident that your maps adequately represent black voters in Wisconsin? Absolutely. And, and, uh, and I agree with the experts who helped us develop it, is that the seven districts instead of six, uh, the, it, it better, it gives uh, blacks in, in the Milwaukee area uh, more voice. And I think that should be our goal, is to make sure that happens. So I, I disagree wholeheartedly with the uh, uh, U.S. Supreme Court's decision, and we're waiting to find out what happens here in the state. So you don't know who your challenger will be mm -hmm. in the fall. There's this Republican primary that will happen in August. What are you watching for in that race? 
Well, I'm, I'm seeing what I'm seeing and is that uh, everybody's just kind of leapfrogging to, to the right to, you know, I guess get Donald Trump's endorsement. I'm not quite sure. But, it, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, it is, it is going to be, you know, to some extent voting rights is a, a huge issue here in Wisconsin. But it, there, there are bread and butter issues that uh, are important and uh, people continue to talk about it, whether it's our... Are those candidates talking about those issues, do you think? No, they're talking about uh, making sure that uh, we, we punish people for uh, wanting to vote, make it more difficult. They're spending a lot of time talking about you know, making it more difficult for people to vote. And uh, uh, if you're eligible, we should be encouraging people to vote instead of saying, well, yes, but you have to do X, Y, and Z. You know, think of a disabled person. There's an article in the paper the other day. He votes by mail. Uh, he wants to deliver it by hand, and he can't hand it off to the person that has done it in the past. What in the heck is that about? Why, why should we be, be so descriptive and prescriptive around that issue? The last election was fair, it was honest, it was secure, all the things that we, we treasure in the state of Wisconsin. So we spend a million dollars trying to prove that, that some, something happened that didn't happen, and we have candidates uh, kind of echoing that. I, to me, it should be about the basic issues, and I think I have a pretty good record on those, and uh, so I'm, I'm going to be focusing on what I know people in Wisconsin care about. So we're going to, speaking of election reform yeah. and kind of the things that uh, the legislature tried to move forward in, on that issue, we're going to hear from Speaker Voss talking about the need for election reforms and some of the bills that were proposed that didn't get signed into law. You can go to the legislature's website and you can actually read the text of the bill. You have the ability to know exactly what's in there. And I think if the broad swath of citizens actually read what was in the bills that we're proposing today, the Democrats would feel pressure to actually push forward to say these are very reasonable ideas. But unfortunately, they have kind of got one talking point that you report on regularly, which is we don't really want to have people vote. Yes, we do. We want to make sure that every legal citizen has the right to vote once an election. That does not seem to be some kind of you know radical idea. So Speaker Voss says in that clip that absolutely the intent of the election reforms that have been on the table for the GOP are not about limiting people's right to vote. You just categorically oppose that view. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as I said, there's, you know, it's clear that the goal for Speaker Voss is to make it more difficult for people to vote. I mean, any of those bills, they haven't sent me all of them yet. So they're just kind of hanging out there in the ether right now. But, um, yeah, I, I, and they know this, uh, I, I've said time and time again, it is, if people are eligible, we should be making it uh, easier for them to vote, not more difficult for people to vote. That's a basics. And, and you know, for, for Speaker Voss, you know, over the last couple of weeks, it's been kind of a shift. He said there's been massive fraud. He's never said, or something like that. He's never said that before. Uh, he, uh, he is now, you know, he's spending probably almost a million dollars on the Gableman um, uh, fiasco that uh, is going on. He's been, f he's been found to be in contempt of court and, uh, and uh, on not, pr not providing records that, uh, that exist or that should, should exist around this, around the Gableman experience. So is he, he distracted on this issue? Yeah, I'd say. I mean, the, 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 the concern I have, and I, I've been around a long time, the Wisconsin Elections Board was created by the Republicans because they didn't like what happened with the Government Accountability Board, and they didn't like what happened be even before that. We, we just can't be changing our election system because you don't like the results. Uh, maybe you should find a better way to make your case to the people of Wisconsin. So a lot of eyes we talked about nationally on your governor's race mm -hmm. with a lot of Democrats saying you are the last line of defense against the erosion of democracy. Do you see yourself that way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, voting rights are important. We live in a democracy. The most important thing you can do in a democracy is participate in voting. And, uh, and we do pretty good in, in Wisconsin. Why should we be discouraging people? And you know what concerns me, obviously, is not only now, but what happens, what happens in this next November? All the Republican candidates have said, you know, 
when Evers is gone, we're bringing this back. We're going to cite. We're going to have it in place uh, for the 2024 election and any other elections in between. So yeah, the, this is it's an issue on voting rights. I know. I know it's so hyper uh, po politicized in our state that a lot of people have tuned it out, and I can understand tuning it out. But do it, you think it, they should tune in? You know. They're, they're thinking about what happens to their kids in the schools and what's happening in, in the streets as, as it relates to crime and, and making sure that we have good health care. Th those are things that are always going to be top in the mind. But yeah, it, it is an issue. The voting rights are really important for our democracy, and our democracy is uh, at risk right now. Now, yes, I could spend all the days of my running for office talking about that. I'm not going to talk about it as much as the Republicans do, but that's an issue. I'm going to deal with it uh, as those bills come through. I haven't seen them all, so I'm not going to say I'm going to veto them all. But at the end of the day, my goal in this race or right now as governor of the state is to make sure that we have a system that works and the system that we have right now works. Midterm elections yeah. usually hard on candidates from the Republicans par party, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, from the incumbents party, right. President Biden's approval ratings have been somewhat low. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate this race to be closer than your last race where you won by last time was Last time was close, Lisa, very Does close. Is it be closer? Uh, no, I, I, I think it's going to be even, it's, we're going to enlarge it, but it is, it, we are a purple state. I mean, no matter what happens, uh, you know, during the campaign, we're a purple state. It's going to be close. We're, I'm working hard to make sure that, that I win. But um, no, it is, uh, uh, it, it's obviously an important race. Do I think that the, the, the president's uh, ratings have a huge role in it? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I th you know, during the, during the same that doesn't time. That doesn't make you afraid that it's going to be really, really Oh, good. no, absolutely mm -hmm. not. I mean, my, my approval ratings have gone up. His have gone down. And so, uh, and I think his will improve, but I'm not an expert on his, his numbers. I'm, I'm concerned about doing things for the people of Wisconsin, and, and that results in better, better ratings. So, I, no, I, I think uh, it's, it's obviously an important race, but I, I do not think that uh, whatever is happening with uh, Joe Biden influences it. I think he, excuse me, I think he's doing a pretty good job, frankly. You know, we've been able to put this money into schools and into law enforcement and, you know, our health care system and our, our businesses in the state of Wisconsin. We, we are number one in the nation in providing resources to business to the business sector uh, during this pandemic and that's playing out in having a relatively healthy economy so people are concerned about those issues and i'm going to continue working on those you mentioned we're a purple state there is some polarization clearly mm. how do you talk to undecided voters what's your message well it, it is about you know you want your you want your roads to be in good shape uh, we've done that we, you want broadband in rural Wisconsin, we brought it to 300,000 people. Taxes too high, we reduce it, I promise we'd reduce it by 10%, we reduce it by 15%. So I can talk about what we've done, but I can also say, you know, using broadband as an example, we're just, we're just, uh, we're just scratching the surface. We will need more investment and, and the Biden infrastructure bill will help us do that. But we need more of that. We need to, we need to give, uh, kind of unhandcuff our school districts so that they don't have to have 81 school districts in April of this year going to referendum. So those are the things people care about and that's, that's a pitch I'm gonna be making to them. And I'm also, frankly, someone that, um, uh, and sometimes people criticize me for this, but I'm, I don't overreact a lot. Uh, that's, uh, that's something that I think people in Wisconsin uh, value. Uh, you know, the, you, you see it playing out in the voting rights issue. It's, it, it couldn't be meaner or more mean-spirited than what it is, and it's especially uh, problematic when it happens around people's right to vote. And so I try not to overreact to criticism, and I try to you don't read Twitter? Uh, no, I, I, no, I don't. I don't participate in Twitter. Uh, so no, I, I am what I am. And, and people of Wisconsin know me. I've run for statewide election a long time and uh, I'm looking forward to a win this November. So a last question. Yeah. What does the Evers family think about you running for a second term? Do they wish, <laughs> Kathy wish you'd be playing p more pickleball these uh, days? No, no they're, they're all with it. I mean, they, uh, 
they they unfortunately some of the criticisms unwarranted criticisms I think they take them uh, more seriously not more seriously but they it hurts them but uh, they they're 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 supportive they're ready for another term and uh, Kathy certainly is she's spent a lot of time working on dementia issues and uh, uh, issues that I impact uh, our elderly in the state and of course uh, early childhood is something that's really important to her so in addition to uh, staying healthy by playing pickleball. She's she's out there uh, advocating for her her issues too. Well, final final question. Yeah. What about your bracket? What happened to your bracket? Well, when you you know you go with your heart instead of your head. Uh, I but I do this every year. I always pick the Badgers to go to the Final Four and win. And so if they're if they're not doing particularly well uh, in the in the tournament, it automatically kind of kills your bracket. Absolutely. But okay. that's all right. It's Hopefully that doesn't foreshadow no. other things. No, 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 no. It, it's a, I, I know going in that unless the Badgers do well, uh, I'm going to lose. So I lose with them. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the conversation thank today. You. And Appreciate we wish it. you good luck. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. And thank you to the viewers of Newsmakers. Be sure to tune in again as we highlight the issues and sit down with the decision makers who make a difference for all of us. This program was brought to you from the Margaret Farrell Studio. This program is a production of Wisconsin Eye, an independent, nonpartisan, nonprofit media network with a mission to inform, educate, and engage the citizens of Wisconsin. Wisconsin Eye is the nation's first and only independently funded state civic broadcast network, providing gavel-to-gavel -gavel access to government proceedings and events at the state capitol.